Hi, everyone. It's Kim from Fleece and Harmony, and this is episode 120 of our Knitting and Crochet podcast. I'm recording this podcast on, uh, while well, you're looking at it on April 28th, if you're looking at, at it when it's been published, and we're recording in the Iron Shop in our woolen mill on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, and it's a beautiful, sunny evening. I hope everybody's doing fine and had a great two weeks. We have a pretty full podcast again for you this week and uh, lots of things have happened here in our knitting and in the mill in the shop. So we're going to talk about that. Um, I, as always, I'll just do a quick rundown of uh, what we're going to talk about in this, uh, this episode. Also, if uh, there's something in particular that you want to watch or there's parts of it that you are not interested in, I'll just remind you that there's always chapters in the, uh, in the video. So if you're viewing on a computer or an iPad or a pad or, or your, I think on your phone as well, if you just scroll along the bottom of the screen, you'll see the different chapters. If you're on um, TV watching, then you uh, have to go down into the show notes and all the chapters are there as well. I'd like to remind you that if you get into the podcast and you like it, if you could subscribe, that would be great and turn on your notifications. So you'll get a notification every time we launch a new, uh, a new episode. And if you're new here, welcome. This is a podcast where we talk about uh, our our farm and about our shop and about our woolen mill. And I welcome to uh, to the little Fleece and Harmony community if you're if you're new. And of course, thank you to all the viewers who have been watching all the episodes and commenting. I really appreciate it. So as always, we're going to start with a farm update. And we have big news on the farm today because we have a new kitten. So um, if you've been following us, you know that our um, poor little kitty Clyde had passed away a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, but now we have a new kitten and we just got her last night. She's eight weeks old and I'm probably showing a picture right now of her. She's really, really tiny. And Ken and I were laughing last night because it's been a while since we were new parents to a new animal. The pets that we've gotten uh, most recently, the house pets that we've gotten most recently have always been rescues. So they were adults by the time we got them. So now we have a new kitten and it's been years since we had a new little baby animal. Um, she's really, really cute, but she doesn't have a name yet. So I'm hoping you guys can help name her. So I've showed the picture of her. And so she has this little um, kind of brindly look to her. But we uh, will wait to hear comments from you guys or see comments in the in the uh, under the video for some really good names for her. So that's uh, keeping us busy. She's uh, just as big as a minute, but she is uh, like running around the house already. She's litter trained. She's eating kibble. She's, she's pretty amazing. So we're really, really pleased that we have a new little baby in the, in the house. The house is still undergoing renovations, although finally all of the drywall is done and Ken has actually been busy painting. So we've started painting uh, the room, the rooms. So that's a big step. Uh, the dust is cleaned up in the, the drywall dust has been cleaned up in the house for the most part. Uh, but I think, uh, I suspect that we're going to be finding drywall dust for the, for weeks to come, even if we've vacuumed and cleaned and everything. And, um, but we're really happy to, to have the painting started. So, um, we still have trim to put up or to replace because in a lot of the rooms we took the trim down, um, because we had to take down all the old plaster and everything. So we still have some of that work to do, but it's really, um, it's really amazing how, cause the drywall has been up for quite some time, but it's really amazing how just having that uniform finish of the painted, uh, the painted walls it makes it really feel more finished. So we're really, really happy, uh, happy about that. The weather on the farm has been slowly marching towards spring like weather. 
The temperature is about 10 degrees Celsius, which would be probably around 53 or 55 in Fahrenheit. So it's not particularly warm, but it's really bit, we've been having some really, really beautiful sunny days and the grass is growing and um, both the sheep and the horses are actually eating, um, they're grazing in the pasture. So they have free choice hay but uh, they're barely eating the dry hay. They're actually uh, managing to scrape out a living on the fresh grass that, that's uh, growing, starting to come up. Um, we haven't gotten to the point yet where the grass will really, really sprout, but so they're able, the animals are able to keep on top of it. So it's just kind of um, a nice, uh, they're keeping it clipped, let's say, so in a, in a nice way without overeating it or overeating themselves. So that's really, uh, really good. And other than that, uh, every, everybody else is fine. Diva's fine on the farm. Um, chores are a lot easier because they're not, we're not hauling a lot of hay, like I, like I said. And um, we've been able to unplug all the water buckets that were heated because we're not really having any freezing temperatures anymore. So it's uh, it's good. The birds are busy making nests everywhere. And we heard peepers for the first time the other night. So around here, um, these little frogs called peepers are really a sign of spring. And um, once you hear the peepers, then you know that it's it's happening for real. So we can heard peepers for the first time uh, just two nights ago, I think. So uh, we're well on our way. So on this uh, episode, we are uh, we'll have a big discussion with Betsy about Gage and things like that projects, and we'll show uh, all the finished uh, projects and the works in progress that we're doing. Simone and I are going to talk about the projects that she's working on, and she's going to show us her progress on the Ryu uh, shawl by Jennifer Beale. And um, I'm actually going to do a list of five this time as well. And we'll do a fiber festival update at the end, and I, we'll always have the harmony part. And I'm not sure what the harmony part is going to be yet, so I won't be uh, talking about it until um, you'll see it. It'll be a surprise. But obviously, I'm wearing my cowl cardigan. So I finished the cowl cardigan. I am going to have to take it off for uh, some of the other segments of the podcast because it's it's uh, going to be hot. Um, but actually not as uncomfortably warm as I thought it might be because it's very, very warm and cozy. So it's all finished. I've blocked it. Um, you can see that the cowl is sitting sitting just fine. So the, the twist is not making a difference. The fact that I didn't twist the cowl like you're supposed to in the in the design, but it doesn't seem to be making a difference. And um, we're going to talk about this, uh, this project a lot more in the section with Betsy as a finished object because um, it's a little bit too big. And uh, it's because I, it's at exactly the specs that I knit. So it's not that the size of it is a surprise. It's that if you recall, I, I started this it was quite a while ago. I'm not sure. I don't think it was a full year, but it's been it's been um, quite a while that I was knitting this. And I've actually lost weight, some weight since that time. And um, I shrunk, but the cowl cardigan stayed the same size that I started knitting, obviously. So it's a little bit too big, but um, it's super, super cozy and it's meant to be a jacket. So I'm not too concerned about it and um the color i just love the color i love red so this is a this is a great uh, a great color for me and it's very very comfortable to wear and i'm really surprised because i thought by this point i'd be peeling it off because i'd be sweating so i think that um it's knit with kid growing kid classic and i think that this uh shows me that this is a pretty versatile yarn because although it's very squishy and fluffy I'm not really getting overheated. So it's very comfortable to wear. And um, I mean, obviously it's gonna be better in the fall, but uh, I finished it now at the beginning of the uh, beginning of spring. So I'm really happy with it. If I get too hot, I'll have to take it off and we'll, uh, I'll edit, uh, edit that out. So we'll go right to the shop update. And the first thing that I wanna talk about in the shop update is the yarns that we created for assigned pooling. 
So assigned pooling is the technique that is used in making the floral bouquet striped shawl that I go into a lot of detail when, um, when I'm talking with Betsy. So I'll just show a picture of it here. But um, you, we created a yarn to make that project. So we started out with a, um, a fuchsia and green yarn which is this one called tea rose and i showed this on the last podcast so this is not anything new but we decided that we would make another color and so we made a color called nigella and here it is so it's a blue base made with the same technique as the tea rose so if fuchsia is not your thing for the shawl and you would like to do a blue one then you can do it with the nigella um, the Nigella color and all of the uh, yarns. We'll make more of these, I'm pretty sure, because it's really an addictive process to knit these these projects with the assigned pooling. And they'll be um, they'll be you'll see the variegated yarns, but it'll have AP after the name. So this is called Nigella AP. T Rose is called Nigella. Or sorry, T Rose AP. And uh, that'll indicate that they've they've got the dyeing um, calculated so that it should work in assigned pooling projects. You can obviously knit them as just variegated yarns if you want as well. You don't have to use them for assigned pooling, but uh, they will work out beautifully if you want to use them for with assigned pooling. So now we have two colors, and I can see that there's probably going to be more in our future because personally. I'm addicted to the whole process. I just, I just really love it. So I wanted to talk about a couple of um, other books with Rowan uh, that came out this year. So um, we, uh, well, I'm going to talk about one in particular, which I don't think I've showed before. And it's one of the small um, project books from Mode at Rowan. It's called Summer Slipovers for Projects. And I will show uh, pictures on the side here of the four projects that are in, in here. So these, um, what I'm going to feature in the shop update uh, from Rowan is all of the cotton yarns. I just want to do a little review of the cotton yarns. We can't make cotton yarn in our mill. So um, it's one of the reasons why we carry Rowan is because we wanted a, um, to carry a commercial yarn that had a nice a nice cotton as well as other nice uh, nice yarns so we chose Rowan and uh, this they've come out with quite a lot of patterns with this season so magazine number 73 which I showed in previous episodes and other little books that use and feature cotton yarns but this little um, this little book booklet for um, summer slipover for projects has some really really cute designs which i've just showed pictures of next to me and they're all knit with hand knit cotton so i'm going to show um hand knit cotton in um there's lots of colors so you can check on the website if you're interested in this but this is a thicker a thicker yarn and it's a it's a cotton yarn that it knits up really really quick because it's it's fairly thick and it has the same kind of beautiful texture as the summer light cotton yarns in rowan and all four projects in the uh, summer slipovers book are knit in hand knit cotton so they're going to work up really really quickly so if you're interested in in that for uh, knitting for summer that's a that's a nice yarn the other um, thing that I wanted to uh, to show there's there's quite a few cotton yarns. Um, I showed the summertime crochet patterns in a previous episode, and um, I was inspired. Uh, Simone asked me about a list of five with uh, sleeveless tops, so summer tops, because she wants to start working on a summer top. So. I remembered one that was in this uh, this uh, summertime crochet book called Amelia, and uh, I have a picture of it here. It's absolutely beautiful as well, and it is knit with the cotton glacé. So cotton glacé is a mercerized cotton yarn that Rowan makes. It's quite um, 
it looks quite thin, but it's very dense by with the uh, mercerizing uh, process that goes on it. You may recall that this yarn was the yarn that Betsy used to make her mineral sweater from last summer's books. It comes in beautiful, beautiful colors and uh, it is just uh, just lovely and it's really good for um, projects when you want cotton, but you maybe want just a little bit of, um, I don't want to say stiffness because it's not really stiff, but a little bit of substance to the, to the, um, the project that you do do it's quite dense so it gives you a nice um a nice texture to uh the knitting so it's not going to be soft and stretchy like some of the some cotton yarns can be and uh, so that's the cotton glacé so if you're interested in that um there's lots of projects in the catalog for spring 2023 in Rowan in the book in the main magazine as well that use cotton glacé um, the next yarn that I want to talk about are the summer light yarns. There's two sizes of summer light. There's summer light four ply, which is kind of like a fingering weight. And there's the summer light DK, which is um, a DK weight. I talked a lot about um, summer light DK many, many times because um, that's the one I did used for my uh, Cornwallis sweater. I love this yarn. It's squishy and um, kind of unexpected for a cotton. If you're used to cottons that feel kind of stretchy and they don't really feel like they have, um, doesn't have elasticity because it's cotton, but it does have a, a very nice um, texture to it that it doesn't go too loose and sloppy. So if you've knit with some cotton yarns, you'll know what I mean. Um, but they can tend to be a little bit sloppy looking after you've knit them up. So part of it is the patterns that Rowan designs with this yarn, that they have good structure so that they, the patterns hold up. But it's also this yarn is just a delight to knit with. And if you have knit with a cotton yarn that feels hard on your hands, you don't need to worry with the Summer Light DK um, because it feels great on the, on the hands. We have all the colors that they make. So um, any color that you want in the range, we, we have it in stock. So you can take a look at um, the Summer Light DK. And the other... Um, yarn that they have in the summer light range is the four ply which is a fingering weight and we also have all of the colors uh for that and in the show notes i'll list um some of the patterns in the in the magazines that that use each of these yarns and those are all 100 percent cotton those yarns so now we have uh rowan also does some cotton blends and the first one I want to show is cotton wool. So this is a blend of cotton and wool. This yarn was launched um, when Rowan started their Bloom selection. So they have done a selection of books that uh, use this yarn and they are projects for mom and for babies. So it is a washable yarn, but it does have some wool in it and cotton. And I'm going to, going to show a picture of a really cute pattern because I had a customer come in the other day to buy the yarn for this pattern. It's the Humphrey, Hun, Humphrey the Bear, which was um, uh, designed by Janice Anderson. And I did a quick search on Ravelry and uh, Janice Anderson has a beautiful sense of humor with her amigurumi that she does. And as you see from the picture of Humphrey, uh, they're really whimsical and lovely. And she did um, Humphrey the Bear using cotton wool. And it's just a beautiful project. It takes four balls. So one ball of each of the colors in the bear. And you can buy the pattern separately on uh, the Rowan website, actually. She also um, did a pattern with chickens, which is uh, you can buy get that pattern for free. So if you if you put Janice Anderson in Ravelry and do a search, you'll find that she's done these really, really whimsical chickens and you can use them. Uh, you could use the cotton wool to make those. They were done in um, a yarn that Rowan had before I was carrying Rowan. And I think it was called um, pure wool or pure organic or something like that. And um, 
but the cotton wool can replace that in those patterns. So that's the cotton wool. It's beautiful for baby projects and you can knit with it for just for adult projects as well. It's great for making baby blankets and obviously amigurumi too. So you can check that one out. Again, we carry all the colors that they make. And the final cotton yarn that we carry from Rowan is the cotton cashmere. So this is another cotton blend, cotton with cashmere. And there's lots of uh, projects uh, with this. It's also featured heavily in the summer, um, summer patterns from this season as well. And it's just a lovely, um, has a little bit of a silkiness to it. Uh, and it has softness and, but yet like a cotton uh, texture. It reminds me just a little bit of the Denim Reeve 5, which is also a cotton yarn, but I, I wasn't showing it uh, here. It hasn't, because the Denim Revive is um, a little bit denser, but the cotton cashmere has a similar feeling, but in a little bit more of a fluffy, fluffy texture. Um, it doesn't have a halo, so the cashmere doesn't give it a halo, but just gives it a really, really lovely softness. So it's a yarn that is kind of, um, under the radar a little bit, but uh, there's some really great projects in this uh, this uh, summer's selection in cotton cashmere, and it's just a beautiful a beautiful yarn as well. And we carry all the colors that Rowan makes in that. So that's a little bit of a an overview of the cotton yarns that Rowan that Rowan makes. And um, if you're looking for projects to knit for summer then I would encourage you to go and check some of the Rowan selection in that. We're also going to do the list of five, which is going to be summer tops. And uh, I will uh, tell you the types of yarns that you could use uh, to, to make those um, it, with Rowan yarns as well. So I think we're going to go uh, right over to the discussion that I had with Betsy. We're going to talk a lot about getting the size sweater that you intend to get and uh, so again we're going to be talking about gauge uh, swatches and i am definitely going to take this uh, cowl cardigan off now <laughs> while we're over there talking to betsy and uh, we'll see you back on the other side of the segment with betsy hi betsy hi kim <laughs> We have new microphones. We do have new microphones. Now, now I have to. Now I need one of those clapper. Oh yeah, the things. the the snap boards. Sna Take one. Is, is oh, that what I, they call? I don't know. I oh, just okay. made it up. Right so on the I spot. just had to clap. So now that made us laugh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we have our new microphones on. We know the last episode the microphone went off. Mine stayed on, which was the problem. If they both went out, that, that would have been, been okay. okay. But one went out and the other persons didn't so that yeah. meant the two sound levels i did the best i could so thanks for your patience and your understanding yes absolutely <laughs> okay <laughs> we by no means claim to be technological pros at no, this no. we've learned lots but yeah and now i can add sound editing to my nice. yes yeah, well yeah okay so it's all in the past so how have you been good good, good. spring is slowly slowly yes. arriving i know i talk about the weather every time but we're canadian it's a thing you have yeah. to do it when Especially, you see each other you yeah. dwell on the weather yeah that's the that's yeah. what the first topic of conversation is all the, all time. the time right yeah. so it's gray things are turning green but it's not warm yet it's i showed up the other day in my what you called my parka yes and you said oh no the parka came back out and i was like well it's cold and i yeah. don't want to be cold yeah that's right there's nothing worse than being cold oh. but you know what it, you may not realize it because you're not watching the same things that we watch oh. in about animals eating but the horses are barely touching their hay their dry hay and neither are the sheep does so that they're, mean they're into the grass so they're oh, getting okay. enough grass even though it just looks like a skiff they they're in big enough uh it's a skiff of grass now we have now. a skiff of snow and a skiff of grass yeah, not at the same time no. but yeah hopefully not at the same time <laughs> but they um because they have both of them have they're both groups have bigger fields than what they really need they're able to get and seems like they're getting enough because they've got free choice hay dry hay and they're not eating it perfect yeah yeah so and, no, and nobody's losing weight probably like us the fresher their vegetables the more nutrients in it yeah would be my guess yes yeah. yes yes 
even if you have good quality hay, it's not the same as grass, as, yeah. fresh grass. So, right. all right. So what are we going to talk Knitting. about? We have a lot of yeah. lay So you pulled uh, something out of the I have. hibernation. I brought back out my patty wrap. I almost forgot about this. I know. Well, no, I didn't. I yes. Say, so did I, but no, I didn't. I just had tucked it away um, mainly because I needed both um, the same needle size for both this and the Cordelia. Okay. And I'm, I'm like a minimalist tool person. So... <laughs> I know, not not Kim's thing. I finally <laughs> did, however, get into the TBK cords, right? Which saves me a big headache right. because putting these cords in versus like a, a scrap piece of yarn, especially yeah. on this alpaca classic yarn, which has some stick to yes. it, is way better. So I've actually now been able to just like zip it out back and forth, whichever ah, project I okay. want to be on. Okay, so, yeah. So the uh, so alpaca classic yep. is the yarn. This is from magazine we can't remember. We can't remember. We'll have to put so it below. So we have it. We have a yes. below. So if you just want to hold that, yep. I'm just going to show the color. This corner you've got oh, it. Okay. Yeah, I've got them. So these are the colors. Yeah. Um, close to what's in the book. Very close. I switched this out. I believe it's called gray melange. Yes. It's, a, it's like a darker charcoal gray. Yes. So I switched the navy in for that gray. Yeah, which instead. is Eclipse. Yeah. And this soft gray was in the original as well. It right? is, yes. Yeah. And okay. I might have changed, I think I changed the order a bit so that I have more of the light gray than I would have. Okay. Yeah. And tell us what you love about this project because I know you like it. I do. It's really, so first of all, it's it's not complete mindless knitting because mm -hmm. there is some counting because you have to pay attention to the pattern. But so first of all, the colors, that is yeah. what drew me in. As you can see, this, I call this color, I think my soul is this color. That's yeah. what I tell Matthew all the time. <laughs> Fuchsia, and, for sure. Yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so colors first. And then it's, so it has multiple textures in it. We're actually holding up an end where I made an error. This is the better end. Oh, is that what that <laughs> stitch marker is for? Yeah, I need to fix that. Okay. Um, so you get different textures for each different color. color. Um, not all of them, I guess. Not not all of them are different. But my favorite stitch that I've discovered is this. It's like a slip. I think they call it a slip stitch. Okay. So you knit one, then you slip one, then you knit one, you slip one. Does on this the... gives this wavy one? Yes, is that... on the okay. one side. So it gives. Well, this I have no like... idea if people are going to be able to actually see, see the the blue stripe on there. Has yeah. the navy. I might try to zoom in on it. In a bit. In the, yeah, because I. I'm going to try not to ha have to edit in a picture. But... Too much, yeah. Yeah. So you get that one on the blue and on the yellow. And I really, I really like that. And true to form for me, so the first two repeats, I had to look at the pattern because I just couldn't get, because you have to start the rows different to get opposite. So okay. sometimes you knit two, then slip. Okay. And the next one, you knit one slip. And I couldn't, I couldn't read it. I couldn't oh, okay. find it in the actual knitting to figure out ah, what I okay. had done. Okay. So it took me till like the third repeat before I can now, I don't even need the pattern right. anymore. So okay. each of the texture stitches I can now do without the pattern. Okay. Um, so they're not okay. super difficult. I just, I'm still, there's times where I just can't identify if I've knit or purl, which I know sounds crazy, but. On a different, a different kind different of texture. Different texture, yeah. Stitch. Oh, absolutely oh, yeah. on stuck in it. I can yeah. see it. But if I'm doing a different well, texture. Well, it's not always easy. Okay. Yeah, right. I that agree. Makes me feel good. Yeah, because uh, I'm doing um, on the floral uh, flower, floral bouquet shawl, yes. striped shawl. Um, you do the cluster stitches on the right side and the wrong side. Okay. And I'm not finding it that easy. I'm following the instructions, but I have to look at it almost every time. I have to say, and I'm not sure if I'm not executing it correctly all the time or if I'm discovering as patty Lyons would say i'm discovering something new that maybe right. i like better i'm right. not sure okay. so i haven't figured that out yet yeah. but well and i think mm -hmm. as you go along and the more you do something sometimes like it's muscle memory that yes. actually has to figure it out your yes. hands have to figure it out and connect it to your brain yeah so, exactly yeah. and then there's like a checkerboard one and the double moss stitch yeah is also in there too nice okay yeah. and this is uh always when rowan gives you a wrap it's very generous. Yes. So you probably have. This is halfway. Halfway. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. And my intention is, because I don't really, 
do a lot with scrap yarn. So I don't like to have scrap yarn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do all the repeats they tell me. And then my final repeat, I'm just going to use up the rest of oh, the color. Good. Because I figure you can why do not? like little stripes, yeah. short stripes. It'll either yeah. short or I'll just use up whatever I have and it will be whatever width it is. Yeah, great. So that's my Perfect. plan. That's yeah. good. So that's the patty wrap. That's the patty wrap. I was telling, it might be because I'm hungry now, <laughs> but every time we say the patty wrap, I think of a hamburger. Or I think like patty clap. Patty clap. Is that a no. <laughs> patty, Did I just say patty something whack. bad? No, no. <laughs> patty whack. <laughs> Give a dog a bone. I should not say. But now I'm blushing in case I said something bad no, no, the no, way you it reacted. Bad. Oh, it wasn't no. bad. Okay. All good. But just in yeah. my mind. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it is the patty wrap. I'm assuming it was named after some lovely lady named Yeah, Patty. I think they were all singers or something. Oh, So it could okay. be, and it's not Patsy, it's actually no, Patty. So Patty, it could be, okay. well, maybe we'll have to look up. Okay. Look it up. I don't, I don't I, know. I could. If I can remember to do okay. that, I'll look it up. Sounds good. Okay. And so uh, then we have notes here, but we've already gone off the, off oh, the nice. order. But that's okay. So why don't we, um, we have quite a long discussion that's around the Cordelia cardigan because it leads into something. Yeah. So how about I'm going to show my cowl cardigan yep. now. I don't have it on because I wore it in the introduction and I'm pretty sure that by the time I finish the introduction, I'm going to be really, really hot. Yeah. So I don't have it on. I mean, I was complaining that it's not warm, but it's not wearing a full wool jacket cold yes. anymore either. Yes. So I, I'm going to, um, you folks at home would have seen this on me already nice. and but i am going to show it because i it's so big that i'm going to need help and i'm just going to um talk about the twist thing yes. because that's what we were talking we about were chatting before. i was going to say we need to have the twists yes so solved. that's why we're going to do that so here it is the jacket we disappeared yeah <laughs> it's it's big and uh the cowl is here in the front and I can see that if you are leaving the cowl hanging down, which personally, I don't know why you, you would, would do, do that. Okay. Because why would you want this big hanging thing in the, just hanging in the front? It doesn't make no. any sense to me. Yeah. But twist it up like the cowl, like how I intend to wear it. The, the fact that my cowl is not twisted doesn't make any difference. Isn't mattering. No, okay. it, it doesn't you matter. You had talked about whether it would pull the two lapels together at all. Is it, that? Yeah, it does. That? It, it does. does okay. And they look fine. So the twist yeah. didn't matter in the end. Yeah, but it would matter if you were leaving it leaving down. It but I, like okay. I said, it's so big, you might trip on it. So I don't understand <laughs> So long, well, I should say. Or at very least, you lean forward and you're going to dip it in something. Yeah, yeah. in your so, ketchup on your well, whatever. Well, ketchup, you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> on this color. So um, I don't know how to, how to, um, it's very, very cozy and lovely. Yes. It's just a little bit too big. And we debated whether I was even going to talk about it. <laughs> but we decided to talk about it. Yep. Full disclosure. Um, full disclosure. And so now I'm wearing my other too big sweater. Which is the t the tungsten, which is actually um, turned out the size that it's supposed to be. I'm just going to shift back. I think I shifted okay. away from you. Yeah. So this is actually the way that this is supposed to fit. Okay. So it is supposed to be like a bit. Yes. And I was complaining because I wanted, my intention was to have less ease. Right. But it actually, this is the way that it's going to fit. Okay. So at one point I discussed if I was going to cut it and everything. I think I'm just going to leave it. I, yeah. I think I'm going to leave it. Just let it be for those days. I don't know. Maybe you don't have those days. I have days where I do not want anything touching my torso. Oh, yeah? I just want it to be free and flowy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I don't think Kim really has those days. No, yeah. but I'm fine with it now. Good. I've, I've, I've reconciled myself that this is the way it was meant to fit. And I knit it and it came out the size that it was supposed to. There you go. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the sizing thing because it's it's kind of like one of those boyfriend things. It's not you, it's me. Oh, <laughs> It's not the pattern, it's me. And then we're going to talk more about that. <laughs> yes. And we're going to talk more about this. But the cowl cardigan is finished. I had it on in the introduction so you can see what it looks like. I might take a picture it's it's uh doesn't fit me the way that i intend it hoping, although yeah. it's exactly the size that i knit okay okay so, so that's, that's okay. what we'll talk about all right it. so we're going to kind of skip because you're going to talk about your cordelia Cordelia, yeah. cordelia because this has started a whole big debate in the shop 
Okay. So first I will show the progress I made. Mm -hmm. um, I'd kind of hoped to have it done at this point, but I had done the steaks, I had cut the steaks, and then it was sewing. And for those of you who know, even someone who doesn't actually mind sewing, sewing is not knitting. So I spent like eight or nine days. Oh, I have to sew the sleeves in. Oh, I should do that. I have to sew the sleeves. It's going to take so long. And then I sat down to do it. And within 30 minutes, it was done. Mm -hmm. And I had actually measured everything properly. So the hole was the perfect size. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, secretly, well, not secretly, everybody can see me smiling while you were saying that because you're such a process or like person with lists and all of like keep check, it going like, keep yeah. it going yeah but i'm i'm I, but i do once in a while get stalled i'm afraid that i've rubbed off on you so i'm just i feel guilty a little bit <laughs> no not at <laughs> all right. so i have this button band is attached and i had talked about i don't gonna... mean to interrupt yeah. you but you are you going to talk about the sleeves because we talked about cutting them in the last episode and you weren't exactly sure because i was horrified oh. that you just cut right yeah. down I totally just did. Okay. Just cut. So I, I, measured, I measured the, the width of the sleeve here at right at the top. And then I just cut down. So she had me bind off three stitches up here. So I just went to the center stitch and I just cut down the, I don't think it was like eight inches or something. Okay. And hoped that I'd not gone too far. And I didn't. And then I just sewed a U around because at that point there's a slit down the like right it was just cut down here so I just sewed a U around there and then just so the, you with my sewing machine the way that you oh so you you stabilized reinforced it, it with my sewing machine okay yeah. and then so the and did you use my hand stitch? sewed no and it, she didn't instruct you to she instructs you to oh. do that, okay yeah, to so do you have stitch, the facing and, and there's everything. a facing on it oh yeah. wow so it's very neat inside yeah. The only thing I'm not sure about that is it does add some extra bulk. Yeah. Um, but I can't wear this. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later. So I haven't even tried it on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have to say it is looks very neat. I, I was pleased with how well it came out. Yeah. The way that it finished it that with that facing and In everything, there. it's beautifully yeah. finished. And I was proud of the fact that like I had because I knit it longer than the pattern called for. And I actually paused to think about what would happen here to make sure that I wasn't part way through a motif and right. made it cut weird. So I thought about the fact that, oh, there's these black two lines between every motif. So I made sure I was there okay. when I brought the shoulders okay. together so that I have a finished motif at the top here. Okay, great. Yeah. And so then the, that was the sleeve we were talking about. Sleeve, yes. And then the button band was a topic of discussion because you yeah. weren't sure exactly how to how that was going to be executed. Right. So I thought I would go rogue because I had an idea in my head. I really like I have a store bought um, cardigan that has like the button band is folded. So it's mm -hmm. double. And I really like that. So I thought, oh, that's what I want. But I've never actually done a button band before. So when I sat down and read the instructions, I had a little talk with myself. I said, Betsy, you've never done this before. Just follow the instructions. Right. <laughs> so I did. And it's come out just fine. You can um, go rogue on the next one. Yeah, exactly. Once yeah. I've done it once. So she, again, she even has you create a facing for that as well. So you get to hide your steak there. Right. So you end up doing the button band, which she had started right down here. Mm -hmm. She had saved stitches or I had saved stitches on um, a holder but then you add additional stitches to that to make the the facing okay when you actually pick up you so add. you so how are you you're knitting this so across um yeah so this one here is just pinned I haven't actually sewn this one yet because I went to do it last night and mattress stitching black yarn after the sun has gone down <laughs> No, <laughs> was it wasn't go working I couldn't for you? see anything. So I just have this pinned at the moment. Okay. So this is actually loose all the way from here. Okay. So you start it. You start it down, down here, here and, and knit just a back strip. And forth. Yeah. Knit a strip. Yeah. And now you sew it on. Yeah. And it's a combination of ribbing, and then the facing is reverse stockinette. Okay. So that what shows on the inside is the stockinette part. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So you have it's curling at the moment. Yeah. So you have the stock in that there. Mm -hmm. 
you seam where the ridge is. Yes, exactly. And then you have this under ah, this to fold, okay. and okay. then you just do a little whip stitch. All right, and then we there. can't really show it because it's not really uh, easy to see no. in the black. Yeah. Even if I took a picture, you wouldn't really be able no. to see it. But the, it's a good, it's yeah. a neat technique. It is a neat technique. Yeah. Yeah. And the, you're seeing the stitch markers are just. I wanted to note where my buttons were so that right. I knew. Your buttonholes are button very holes. neat. Oh, too. thank you. Yeah. I just followed again her instructions, which I thought weren't there. And then I went back and realized way back she'd had me make the first buttonhole on the ribbing. Oh, so okay. I was like, oh, that's where the instructions are for the buttonhole. Oh, okay. So. so that's a good tip. Yes, it is. So I have to say that I love how this is finished. It's, like it's very, um, very well finished. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. She's thought about the details there. Yes. And, and it's well put together. So. Yes. And, and I'm not, I would say that I'm not a great finisher. So Janet here in the shop has beautiful finishing. Right. Her yeah, sewing is beautiful. Her, like her mattress stitch always matches up perfect. Yeah. I can get away with a little bit because it's black. Yeah. <laughs> so I know if you were to look super careful, it's not a hundred percent, but that's, that's But okay. the design itself, uh, the finishing techniques that you learn doing this design, yeah. I think are very, it's, it's I nice. I think. They're quite Norwegian, yes. if, I, oh, if yeah. I think about it, because um, Arna from Arna and Carlos does a lot of this same yeah. idea and right. stuff. And Sitzel, yeah. Hoivik. It right. does it yeah. as well. Okay. They, they always make the facing, and I really like that. Anytime you're going to steak, I love that, because yeah. then it, it hides all that little right. frazzle. And right. then maybe that also helps to keep Structure. that safe. Yeah. 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 I think with the Selkirk worsted yarn, you would be really fine. need to worry, yeah. but it does get, give structure yeah. as well. And that's um, true. So when you're like pulling buttons, if you're undoing the buttons and doing them up, you have just some more yeah, yeah. structure there. So yeah. this is um, Selkirk worsted in crow wing and pearl. pearl. Yes. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Yeah. The only one pr problem doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. So, which <laughs> it wasn't intended for me anyway. It was going to be a gift. However, the recipient is very similar in size to me. So it's not going to fit her either. And I discovered why. Yes. So. So in the pattern, it says, um, let me just note it so that I have it correct. So when you're looking at your sizing and choosing your sizing, so there was two mm. different gauges. So I chose the correct gauge. I got that right. And then it said the finished measurements includes four to seven inches positive ease. So I took my chest measurement right. and then just went with that size thinking that that positive ease was built in there. Right. But if I had done the math, which I, I, I say if, but I actually did the math <laughs> and worked out, okay, so I'm, I have this many stitches per inch, therefore I have this many inches when I'm done. I don't know why I thought magically this four to seven inches of ease would just <laughs> appear when I had just worked out the exact <laughs> circumference of the sweater. Right. So that little instruction kind of threw me, but mm -hmm. I just, powered forward thinking, oh, great, I got this all figured out. Yeah. But I, I, I didn't. So the sweater is probably, well, it's definitely at least a size too small. And I didn't check my gauge as I went. Okay. Which I probably should have. So I washed and blocked the sleeves as my swatch mm -hmm. and they were correct. Mm -hmm. I haven't washed and blocked the body yet. So I may gain some of it back. You'll gain probably an inch. Which would take me to the actual size I made. Right. Right. <laughs> which is not the size I should have made. Right. Uh, so yeah. just to be clear, because this started a whole big discussion. So Simone, Betsy, and I all have had discussions about this. So it's the designers um, have different instructions, obviously, yes. for, for everything. So in some cases, you'll have like Rowan, for example, all of the Rowan patterns have a size and a bust measurement underneath or chest up chest measurement underneath the size. You pick that size and then they have on the very next line of where they're saying the size is, the finished garment size. So for example, if I, I don't remember exactly what it was for the tungsten, but if I looked at that, I knit this for a 41 inch bust, which is what I was when I started it. Right. So a 41 inch bust. And then I looked at the size. So that was size. Let me pick, like say it's, it was large. Sure. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> large. 41 inches is my chest measurement. And then the very next line underneath, it says finished garment size, Actual, 40, yeah. 47 yes. inches. Yeah. So it's very clear. 
that you're knitting something that's going to be six inches larger than the size that you chose as your chest size. Yeah, so just to clarify, so that means that the designer, when they created the pattern, right. has you measure your chest size, but takes into account that positive ease, so adds those additional stitches right. to your cast on to make up for that. So if you right. broke it down by the math, you would, you would see that in the math. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, um, and then in the Maya, which yeah. is a Kristen Drysdale design, I didn't get caught with what you got caught with because I would have probably made the same mistake. But as a matter of course now, I just always figure out, because I'm changing the gauge most often, I rarely knit at gauge. So what I do is I figure out what my gauge is for the fabric that I like, then I figure out how many inch stitches per inch I'm going to have to have. And then I multiply that by the inches of the sweater that I want. Right. Okay. And I did a three-step tutorial on that. Yes. In, so you can, I'll link to uh, the tutorial in the show notes, but you can also, um, uh, I'll put the, the exact title of what it is. Yeah. And it was part of a whole yarn substitution thing and everything. Yeah. So as a matter of course, I just do that. Which is great. Because that gave me success in my very first sweater that I made with the, the Sitzel Huyevik sweater, Sun and Sedestal, I followed Kim's tutorial. This is before I even knew Kim. Yeah. I followed your tutorial and it came out perfectly. Right. And then as I got more independent and thinking I knew what I was doing, I kind of stopped doing that. Right. And now I've, I've paid for it more than once. Yeah. <laughs> So, and it's not that the pattern designer is doing something wrong. It's no. just the way that they do it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not as clear, like it's not as yeah. clear. It's not as clear because um, I looked at a bunch of different designers yeah. that we have books for it here. So I looked up Kate Davies and I looked up Marie Wallen's mm -hmm. books and I've looked up some things. So yeah. what seems to work is that, um, so Marie Wallen, I'm thinking because she used to be a designer for Rowan, does it the same way as That's Rowan makes does. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Kate Davies does it with like, um, choose your chest size okay. and then says specifically in the line under saying, choose a size larger than your chest size. If you want ease. If you want right. ease. If you're looking so for positive ease. She yeah. said, Kristen didn't do that, no. but she does <laughs> say what the ease is. Right. So you have to, if you, if you wanted to do a 36 and you did the math, I know. you, you should have so just added it the is, ease. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, a confusion thing. And, uh, and I'm, I'm always so excited to get going. Yeah. That's, I think yeah. when you're starting a new pattern, it's right. really exciting to get cast on and get going. Right. But if you just take a step back, right. Do that math even measure yourself out, measure out what you figured out is the ease. So then you can like kind of feel it around yourself right. and then uh, hopefully it'll tell you what you need to know. Yeah. And most patterns now, because of all of the sizes and the grades and grading of the patterns and everything have a schematic that has measurements on it, or there's some clues there or whatever. But yeah. so I think, I think this is the part you're right. You just want to cast on. You do. You're you just excited. want to get going and you pick, figure out your size and you want to go. Yeah. But taking 10 or 15 more minutes, which is really what it is to do the math yeah. after you've got your swatch. So yes, yeah. you have to knit your swatch doing that. And then you, you, I, it boggles my mind because I've done it as well. You knit the whole project and think, oh, well, maybe I should measure. <laughs> It's <laughs> really, I've done it. After I put in 50 hours. Yeah. Yeah. After, oh, and goodness. after I measure that, that, that I mean, that's it. Yeah. So now I'm going to, so that's, that's what the lesson was today. So somebody is going to so get the, a yeah, lovely. Somebody, I mean, it was intended as a gift all along. So I'm not devastated that I'm not getting this sweater because right. I was never getting this sweater. Right. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that I can't give it to the recipient I intended to, right. but I'll just have to knit another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is not really a problem yeah, yeah yeah and then related to that is my cowl cardigan problem yes okay so now the other thing that happens is that well um i started the cowl cardigan shortly after i started the tungsten i think yeah i was yeah, working I on them i've been working on it a long a long time yeah so i actually lost about 15 pounds yeah. between the time 
that I decided what I was going to knit and the time that I'm going to wear it. And the other thing is, is that my bust size didn't change that much. It's the rest of my body. So basically what I said to Betsy, I'm going to talk about it on the podcast and I'm going to say it, put it this way. It's not you, it's me. It's not the pattern. It's the problem was me. Oh. I shrunk. So I'm too small for the sweater I knit. Which, <laughs> so, I mean, and that like, happens, right? Because we don't, you don't knit these things overnight. Definitely. I don't knit anything no, don't. overnight. <laughs> yeah. And life happens. So that has also happened to me before too, where unfortunately I've gone the other way at well, times. So and it's the same. We do. Mm-hmm. That's what humans do. We go yeah. up and down. Up and down. Yeah. And when it so. takes you almost a year to knit something, then that's what <laughs> chances are. But you know, the, the other thing is, is that I purposely chose a gauge. I knit the swatch for the cowl cardigan. Yes. I chose, I knew my gauge was wrong. Okay. Not, or not wrong, was different, different. than yeah. what the pattern was. And I went ahead anyway, because I liked the fabric. So what ended up happening was I knit the smallest size and I got the size that I would have intended to knit if I was on gauge. So when you say you knit the smallest size, that so simply means I cast on the stitches for the smallest with, size. For the smallest yes. size. Okay. I got exactly what my gauge swatch told me that I got. So okay. the knitting that I did, the specs are exactly right on the, my finished sweater for what I intended. I shrunk. You shrunk. I yeah. shrunk a little so bit. So we just decided you have a nice, cozy right. house coat. <laughs> yeah, a nice guy can wear a sweater yeah. under it. Maybe it wasn't that it's not going to be like the elegant one yeah. you intended. Yeah, but, that's yeah. right. And the other thing is that I got exactly what I knit, but I also opened up the, the pattern a little bit. So it's double moss stitch. So I opened the, the stitches. Okay. So I think I'm getting a little bit of stretching. I was going to As say well. with because it's out of the alpaca, the kid classic, or the kid classic. So no, no, sorry, um, uh, yeah, kid, yeah, kid classic. classic. Yes, so which kid has classic. doesn't have as much as electric or electricity. Electricity. It, like, like it's got, it doesn't have as much elasticity yes. because it's a mohair yarn. Right. So you know what you can. And I don't feel bad about it because I'm going to wear it and it's a jacket. It was out, never meant to be something to wear inside yeah. really anyway. So I'm fine with it. But um, we all learned lessons. Yes. And yeah. I just, I'm, I'm getting to, I am getting to a point though where I'm like, I really want to get this right. Yeah. So hopefully next time I will slow down. Maybe I'll have to bring in my math to Kim and get her it's, to check well, it out. Well, you don't, you know how to do the math. <laughs> I do. Because it's ironic. The very first sweater you made was perfect. Oh, because I did the math. And, that's, yeah. and because I changed my gauge as well. Right. And I went, I don't know if I should do this, but I followed exactly your steps to right. do that. And because I followed exactly what you said, it worked out. Yeah. So, because so I, I should actually follow exactly I what I my said. gauge, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. All right. So the good news is, though, is that I did do the math on my Maya. Yeah. And everybody is uh, like still panicking and We're hurting <laughs> me just a little bit. Just a little. But I actually, now I'm, I've started the decreases and, um, I'm going to show this. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, because the this these are both part of our Christian Dri- Christian Drysdale knit along. Yes, which officially ends April thirtieth. Yes. right. I'm going to have mine done. Yes, and I will have yeah. mine done too. My intention is to have it done before this airs. So when yeah. you're watching this, Lady Cordelia is finished. Right. So now I'm actually doing the decreases and I would have been finished because I think I said I was going to be finished by the next podcast. I could have been finished, but I squirrel, yeah. I, which I'm going to show later. You're going to see in a second. So this is actually going to fit. So even though it does, uh, it does look, I measured like, I know what my raglan depth is. It's usually around eight and a half inches. I'm on track to do that. that. Okay. Um, it's just a matter now of how quick decreases are going, but it's, you can see now that all of this is loosened down. It's actually pretty wide yeah. at the top. Yeah. It doesn't look as much as it was because that was all scrunched this up. This here was all scrunched on the needle, which yeah. is what we had talked about. We were fairly yeah, confident. Exactly. In that. So, um, and I've been measuring along in case I need to go a little bit longer for the raglan length. Cause okay. that was the other thing I was worried about the last time is that I was going to be right up under my arm without any, but I think it's going to be fine. And it's not actually a raglan construction, right? No, it's you're, not, you're but the decreases, decreases yeah. are, it's not a raglan. I just know like what, what this, it is. should be around eight or eight and a half inches. And I'm, right. I'm going to have that. Okay. Okay. By the time I finished, I know how many rows I have left. 
and I know how many rows I did so I can predict as long as my gauge stays the same where where it should end right so I really like that motif it's beautiful it is gorgeous yeah it's really yeah. beautiful it looks complex but when I look at it I don't think it is like crazy complex no and the yeah. way the repeats go it's easy to memorize yes. you do the first couple um you do one or two repeats and it's easy to memorize even if you're not reading your knitting because i have to say when you get down to this when you're at this x it's a little bit harder to read if you're in the right the, the other things are like diamonds and crosses little small crosses but it gets a little bit harder here but it's easy to mem like the rows individual rows are easy and yeah. my super task oriented brain loves it because there's like these rest rows yeah or for me they're like finish lines yeah exactly <laughs> every time yeah. i hit one of those rest rows i hit the finish line i hit yeah. the finish line and then right. i start like the next race yeah so, <laughs> so that's uh yeah it's coming coming beautifully along. so and then mm -hmm. i i think i'm you decrease pretty quickly too so well, you, like you, you take must, out 34 stitches here. in one one row and then you take out another uh uh yeah 34 mm -hmm. so my my yoke has 17 repeats okay. and on the decrease rows you take out two stitches for every repeat okay so and mine so you're taking out 34 yeah. stitches so it goes pretty pretty Which quick makes sense because once you're to here you need it to come in yeah. you don't want to continue to slope that's you right want it to yeah exactly to so in. i think i'm going to be okay good it looks beautiful yeah. love those colors together yeah it's uh i really like it and mm. i made a little bit of extra length which I wasn't sure now, but it may shorten a little bit because it's Selkirk worsted because that's what happens. But right. I think we're good. Yeah. The purple cone flower. I've been making that to go in the rue kit and I just, I love it. Yes. Yes. I love it. Okay. So that's, um, that's that. Now, yeah. do we, we're checking our notes. We talked about the, or we were pretty organized when we yeah. did this. So we started. did we have anything else that we wanted to talk about the gauge thing? I no, think we I covered think everything. We covered all of our, our gauge You stuff. just have to read yeah. the instructions that the designer gives you and understand what it is that they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. And But if you, barring that, just figure out how many stitches you need per inch and just do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just arithmetic. That and, and believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and believe it. Yeah. Or you've talked to me too about intuitive math. So, make like, like I yeah. said, I had figured out the exact measurement where it made no sense that I thought this four inches of positive ease was just going to magically appear. Right. So just right. make sure you're being also just intuitive about yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, sure. Just a few minutes of reflection. Yeah. I did say I was going to come with the finished project. Yes. And in theory, I did. So we can show it. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't want to bring them here. So I finished up my five little frogs mm -hmm. that I was making mm -hmm. um, from Claire Garland's uh, frog right. pattern. But I posed them or staged them <laughs> with my willow tree figurines that have like kind of memory moments on right. my fireplace mantle. I love to take sort of like classical elegant in my home, but then the whimsical fun part of me can't help it. Okay. So I added these frogs, these little figurines. So you right. can see the little, it's a short yeah. little video. She took a little video, so yeah. we'll put it in here. <laughs> okay. So that's cute. So you have your little army yes. of frogs. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the floral bouquet. Yes. So we're actually not going to do an in the mill section because Betsy has been just day and night um, <laughs> dyeing the assigned pooling yarn. And it's uh, not that it, it takes so long, but for, so first off, often we try to, we are able to dye about 12 skeins at right. once. With this one, we can only do six just right. based on the amount of space it needs to take up in our vat because mm -hmm. I need to have it laid out flat and spread out so i can apply the dye basically like i'm hand painting yes, the dye on that's for what this you're one. doing yeah. Am, yeah that's right so it just takes a little longer so i'm just kind of like double speeding along here yes so we have two colors now mm -hmm. because we we figured that everybody i love the fuchsia but maybe not everybody wants fuchsia so we did a blue one called well. nigella as well which i'll show uh, i probably already showed it in the shop update so this is why my Maya's not done. Because you've made some progress here. Because I've made progress here. So this is the, um, this is slate. And the natural and the pink is all the, in the same skein. And that's called T-Rose 
AP for assigned pooling. And you'll be able to do it in blue if you buy the Nigella um, assigned pooling as well. This is really neat. It is. I I'm really, really liking this. I really like it. So you start with a, with a stripe. So this is the floral bouquet striped shawl by Studio Mitsuko. <laughs> Just want to make sure that I pronounce it right. And it's following a technique that was developed by Don Barker from Barker Wool called Assign Pooling. So you have a variegated yarn, which has a, a specific type of variegation in this case, so that when you do the stitches, when you come to the color section of the yarn, you do three clusters, a cluster for a leaf, a cluster for a rose, and then another cluster for a leaf. And you just do them as you come to them. Yeah, and the so yeah. cool. So it gives you this really impressionistic view that looks like a rose. Now I do want to ask, because I am noting, I haven't actually looked at the pattern, that I'm sending out the door additional natural color to go with this pattern. Yes. So where does that come into play then? After this is done, yeah. you do a lace border and the lace border is in natural. That's where it is. Okay. Because yeah. you were saying this is just the natural that's in the, yeah. the skin. And you do, you create this lovely eye cord mm -hmm. edge as you go and uh you here on one side and on the other side you just have like a raw edge and i'm assuming i didn't read ahead but i'm assuming the lace border is going on that side that would make sense because otherwise yeah. you've put in all this work and you're going to hide your lovely yeah. eye cord yeah exactly yeah. it's super easy this is really you, tempting i know it's really no. fun it's it's absolutely <laughs> addictive i have a plan i have a plan right. i have a plan absolutely addictive <laughs> i love it and uh i just i and i actually don't even feel guilty about it no you i shouldn't. just love it you shouldn't. i just love yeah. it and you you know the only thing is i would say is if you're i don't want to i don't want to sound like i'm being derogatory but if you're too so anal <laughs> that you can't stand the fact that these go all over the place this is a good project for you for people that want to get out of their loosen up, loosen up a bit yeah because you really don't control where they go you have no yeah you're not choosing the placement of these at all right and um, a lot of people have been commenting that have been doing assigned pooling uh knitting and the only thing that i would say and sometimes what i'm doing i did a gauge you do a gauge swatch to start not because you want to hit the gauge because you, the size doesn't matter because it's a shawl but they you want to find out how many wraps you have to do for each section of the color so for mine using our uh our this is this was the prototype of the assigned pooling yarn so mine is slightly different but yeah. just as an example you'll do your own gauge when you're whatever i need to do two wraps for each of the leaves and four wraps for the the rosette in the yeah. middle so that's the cluster that i'm doing which again that's going to depend on your own personal tension gauge and yeah. tension and needle size yeah. i'm using a different needle size than what's for, that was called for um because the yarn is slightly thinner and um you do get a little bit of overflow on some of them i've got it pretty perfectly but other ones you can see that there's a little bit of overflow and you get this you have to work the stitch differently on the front right side and the back side so this there where i have those lines you can see that was probably a wrong side row one and i tried a little few little experiments and i could get rid of those lines by mucking around with the way that they do the thing and you do a next row of stock and net sort of on it but i've decided just to i'm just going with it and didn't you say she says you know this is an organic process right it's it really is it's good for those who don't mind a little free form. Yeah. And I don't know for sure because you go, you, you do a maneuver on the back, then you turn your work, then you do another thing and then you turn your work again and then you turn it. So I actually lose track sometimes how many on times when, you turn. how many times I've turned. Okay. So this actually might be a mistake. I'm not sure, but You're I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I'm absolutely and as I always say, if someone's up that close. Yeah. So <laughs> I and that, but I, then I looked at, I, I examined the picture on the pattern and it looks to me like there is some sections like this, but I figured out a way to get rid of it. Okay. So I could get rid of it if I want it. So now every now and then I'm doing it, um, I'm doing it in a way that gets rid of that. Okay. And then I'm keeping it 
on other ones so, so that I've got, I've got a variety. Nice. People, um, I read a couple comments about this process and people, some people were saying that they don't appreciate oh, the fact that there's holes on either side, yeah. but I'm, I'm good with that. I, I was actually thinking that if I were to attempt this, I might even open up the gauge a little bit more uh, and then it just has, it's a supposed to be effect. a bigger, a bigger oh, gauge, okay. but I went, so you, I went, you went tighter, a little tighter. Yeah. and I'm going to full disclosure. I had this one right here, this little <laughs> Rosa, we'll poke it out. Something happened where I had a really loose stitch in okay. there, and it was a, like over the top big. And I don't know if it's because it's two clusters on top, so I the the yarn pooled. Yeah. <laughs> so I went, I did a cluster going in one direction, and then the next cluster hit right well. on the very top, and so there was quite a loose, like quite a big hole that was maybe the holes there. almost matched up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I didn't really like it. So what I did was I cut out a piece of green oh. out of my my yarn and I actually just did a little duplicate stitch. Yeah. And so it's very forgiving. Nice. Yeah. So it's a great project. This sounds like a wonderful spring relaxation. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah. So lots of you have bought the yarn. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. But if you if you're if you're not convinced yet. And I, I don't know what I, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to, you know, hound whatever you. hound you. But yeah. it is this is this is one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. I would compare it to the fun I had, although the time that I was doing it was not fun when I started doing the little cotton rabbits. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I did those in, in, while I was sitting in the hospital with my dad. Yeah. But um, this is actually, I was so tickled with those. And I'm having the same warm and fuzzy feelings about, nice. about this. Sometimes so. it's fun to just make something that is creative and allows yes. you to play a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think that's it. That's it. Okay, and our microphones uh, stayed on. Nice. Yeah, I I don't know if we did we mention it already that we had to I had to hold the microphone or I uh, know I had it on my shoulder so it was splitting Simone's actually. So new microphones are great, but you have to remember to charge yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's an important step. Okay. See ya. See you next week. Okay. Bye. All right. I'm back. <laughs> Quick change. This is uh, tungsten done in felted tweed for those that haven't seen this before. And uh, it comes from magazine, Rowan Magazine 70. And uh, much cooler than my cowl cardigan with a turtleneck underneath it. So, um, yeah, so Betsy and I have been having these big discussions about the gauge and getting the right size garment and everything. So, um, I hopefully you find that helpful. helpful. And um the tutorials that i did there's a set of three tutorials all about um getting to the final um size that you're going to knit so there's um how to how to knit a swatch um how to measure the swatch and then finally substituting yarns and we talk about um, stitches per inch and that kind of thing so even though the premise was substituting yarns you could actually use it just to make sure that you're actually knitting the right size garment um, no matter how the designer has decided to describe the the sizing and the ease and everything like that so and like we said in the in the segment it's really worth it to just take those extra few minutes you're knitting a swatch anyway right <laughs> so to take those extra few minutes to just do the math to make just to double check that you're getting exactly what you uh what you want and betsy and i are going to take our own advice on the next uh the next sweaters that we make so um, we'll, we'll go right to the segment now with Simone because she also has had some projects finished and uh, we're going to catch up with her on the Ryu uh, shawl by Jennifer Beale and uh, we'll talk show the yarns and everything that she's using in her projects and she's uh, she's got a few finished projects and um, she's uh, we'll see what happens because uh, she was shopping around for some yarn today so in the next episode we may have a new project as well but in the meantime she has finished a few things so let's check that out with simone hi simone hi kim how are you this week good and yourself oh good good we have new microphones we do. i'm gonna say this in every segment 
because the last time we the microphones went the one mine kept working but the other one went and mm -hmm. if you watch the last episode 119 then you know that already but <laughs> so we should start we're, i think we feel pretty organized today i think so yes yeah. we've got a plan yeah about what we're going to do but first we're going to talk about what you're wearing yes this is the anchor summer tea right by petite knits yeah and it's knit in summer light dk right and i showed that uh t-shirt i think on one of my or there's a sweater there's a kid's sweater i showed yeah. it actually as one of the kids uh child sweaters mm -hmm. and the list of five yeah um and i am actually doing a list of five in this episode so i could almost put this in except i went for mostly <laughs> sleeveless but and the color is not king right i think so i yeah. love that color yeah it's really really nice i love the color and i love the name because yes. it makes you think of the Beatrix Potter stories. Well, that's where that's where it came from. That's right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. So today you have finished objects and you have works in progress. And we're mm -hmm. going to show the yarn as we talk about them. Right. And um, I actually am going to say that I'm wearing the tungsten sweater knit from felted Rowan Felted Tweed in from magazine. Was it 70? I think, think yeah, so. 70. Yeah. Um, because I know that I'm going to change by the time we get to this, because in the introduction, I'm wearing my cowl cardigan and it's not going to make it through the whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> <Cowl cardigan. laughs> so, so for those that are wondering, this is, this is the tungsten in felt a tweet. So you've got a finished object from something that we showed last time. I do. Okay. Which one do you want first? Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Did we show the hats before? We did with one. Okay. I don't think it was the last episode. Okay. We'll Everybody's so just thinking to themselves, just show something yeah. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. So we showed this hat in one of the previous episodes. Um, if you've watched, you know that I'm practicing with my making belt or mm -hmm. my Shetland knitting belt. Mm -hmm. um, and the hats are what I've been making because they're quick and they're efficient and I don't really have to think a whole lot about them, which is nice. It's kind of um, like relaxation. -ness. Right. Yeah. Can I just say you did a beautiful job blocking these? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they're really like, it's really, I love a good block. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And th this is really, so do you, did you pin them or did you just lay them out? I just laid them out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They block beautifully. In case you're wondering <laughs> okay so you're going to talk about the pattern and i will show the yarns as you describe them so okay. which one do you want to start with we'll start with this one first okay. so this is kind of a spin-off um, on one of my patterns which is the sable island hat uh, i just use the horse motif and then i kind of switched it up for the crown because i was using leftover stash yarn mm. to work on this and I was going to run out of the bramble um, and it's an older bramble so we didn't have anything that matched exactly in the shop so i decided just to switch it out with the autumn birch on the top so the background here is bramble and then ordinarily i would put bramble all the way to the top and then the little speckles would be autumn birch but I decided to just kind so of change what did, it up so what did you do you put the ordinarily i would do the ribbing and the autumn birch and yeah. then the background color would be the same ah, all the way through okay but this time i decided to swap it out okay so the background what you're calling so the horses are the background or um, the, the, the bramble is the, the bramble is the background yep. so the horses is the main motif yep. so normally the horses would have been in bramble nope the background <laughs> would be in bramble <laughs> okay <laughs> and i would have continued it on the crown oh so, okay yeah. all the way up exactly all the way up yeah. and then the the lice would have been autumn birch right so you just reversed them yeah because okay. i was going to run at a bramble so yeah, it's going to be a long along the, <laughs> along the episode <laughs> no, i'm gonna i'm really stunned all right so here we have the autumn birch and the bramble yep so again great um a great combination because autumn birch is actually not in bramble but mm -hmm. they, it's just a beautiful they a play beautiful really well together yeah. and this is selkirk worsted it is yeah, yeah. and the pom-pom is super cute yeah i love pom-poms i yeah. love a good pom-pom yeah you make a good pom-pom <laughs> yeah perfect 
And, and Joanne will be really happy because I promised her that she could have this hat. Oh, so yes, that's right. Because then we're going to gift it to, yes. to Joanne, our good so customer. So she'll get it on Saturday. Yeah, you'll get it. Yeah, <laughs> so you're going to gift it. And um, do, do you have any tips for getting that pom-pom like that? It's just, it's so full and perfectly round. Yes. Um, I have one of those pom-pom makers, yeah. the plastic ones. And whenever I wind my pom-poms, I try and wind them evenly all ah, across and then okay. so like back and forth um and you fill it up as evenly as you can you don't want any big lumpy sections right. anything like that and you do the same for the other side you give it a snip you tie it really tightly yeah um i usually go around once tie a knot and then come back around okay just to make sure that everything is you know secure. snug and secure yeah and before i pull the pom-pom maker off i give it a little trim around the edges oh, okay. with my scissors just to make sure there's no like right little bit sticking out because usually i'm trimming mine when it's loose but yeah. it's probably better to do it when it's still in the yeah in and the I, mold i do a little <laughs> bit just here and there yeah. if there's like the odd piece that kind of yeah. sticks out okay but, oh, yeah that's a good it seems tip. to work yeah the evenness of the yeah so just think of it as meditation yeah there's no rush and use lots of yarn because yeah. the more you use, the poofier pom pom yeah, is going to be. The more dense it is because this yeah. actually looks like it's re it's noticeably yeah. beautiful. It's a round pom pom. It's round, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is a, a spin on the Sable Island hat. Right. Not quite, but again, yeah. Simone's the master of just using up what you have and you I have a like beautiful, that. yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's that one. And the next one is again another make and practice hat, and this one has little bees on it. Oh, and then it has honeycomb at the top. So, was this is this a new pattern? This is just one that I have in my books. Um, okay, I have scribblers at home that I keep little sketches and things. Oh, in. Okay, and yeah, this is this is one of the ones that I have in my sketchbooks that you you made but didn't release as a pattern, right. Okay, I've got so, a lot of those. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair warning, because for sure, <laughs> I think we, I think we all should vote and make Simone publish this. <laughs> I mean, with the bees, it's gorgeous. I found the bee motif. Um, I think it was a fillet crochet. Oh, it's a crochet um, originally. Yeah. Yeah. I think beautiful. it was originally a, a fillet crochet chart okay and i switched it over to knitting okay so if anybody knows where this motif came from okay i'd love to know yeah because i'd love to credit, credit. the person it, yeah yeah exactly oh beautiful okay and this is actually you must have had a lot of autumn birch um well i got another ball oh, okay <laughs> because now it's autumn birch paired with blubber blubber yeah okay I hesitate it because I wanted you to pronounce it. I always say plover, <laughs> but I know it's plover. I think it's plover, but I always say plover. So, um, okay, great. This this batch of plover is just a little bit more sand, uh, more goldy, I think. Than but it still goes with the yeah. Birch, I think so. it'll go really well. The low contrast is beautiful. So, do you want me to edit out the part where I said you're going to have to? publish this pattern no. okay because <laughs> you know now there will be pressure yeah, not from me <laughs> not from me but from everybody out there okay yeah <laughs> i figured you know you kick around with bees they're pretty cute and it's they're beautiful. all coming out this time of year yeah yeah and so we're coming up to no more may yeah so this is a big thing for us because we have fields full of dandelions because yes. the sheep love dandelions yep our neighbors are not such a big fans yep <laughs> <laughs> up to the point where one of my neighbors just redid their lawn last year around this time yeah. and i was like why are you doing it now all of my dandelion seeds are going to go over the anyway she stays on top of it but yeah i don't think she's a, a big fan of no more no more may but <laughs> the sheep love to eat the dandelions so that's what i we think do. they're pretty and sunshiny yes i don't i tell my story of my friend from uh whose mother was from Holland or ne the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I know that there's one's right and one's wrong, but mm -hmm. Netherlands, I think. Yeah. From the Netherlands. And um, I can always, I tell the story every time this, around this time of year, because she said, I was a little girl and she was talking to my mother and she said, Oh, she said, I just love this early spring here in Canada because of all of those dandelions. All we have in, she was, she was older. So she mm -hmm. said, all we have in Holland is those stupid tulips. <laughs> it's always, I find it's always a good 
lesson on perspective. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. We're, we're trying to eradicate dandelions, and mm -hmm. she all she ever she likes them much better than those stupid tulips. <laughs> so I just love that. <laughs> Lainey was her name. She was lovely. <laughs> okay, so that's the hat. So yep. we'll look forward to the bee pattern. <laughs> coming out and you did this on your making belt as well i did yeah, yeah. great so, i think you're getting the knack of it by the i think i am yeah, yeah i think yeah. you are right <laughs> okay perfect all right so that's what you finished and then yes. you have another finished object i do uh, okay so we've just had a break yeah we did I, I we we start recording this before the day is actually over and because usually we don't have many customers coming at the end of the day mm -hmm. but and we're very thankful for every customer that comes yes, yeah. so we've just had a customer mm -hmm. so there's a probably a jump cut went before we got here got here and you might notice that the microphone is now on my shoulder <laughs> because somebody the producer forgot to charge the microphones he charged the the what i don't know what would you call that the wi-fi the adapter do yeah. yeah the adapter but not the microphones. So We're mine's not any names. My, my no, no names will be mentioned. So mine still has a green light on, but Simone's light my poor Simone's light went dim. So now we have the microphone on my shoulder. And it's servicing us both. And it's servicing yeah. us both, right. <laughs> so anyway. So you have a finished object, Simone. I do. <laughs> Okay. And I'm actually going to put it on because I'm not going to knock a microphone off. Yeah, that's right. Yes. No. See, everything happens for a reason. All right. <laughs> oh, so, cute. I finished my um, DR K. K Everyday Cowl. Yes. Yeah. I had to think about it for a minute there. <laughs> By Andrea Mowry. Yes. Um, and it's knit in our Selkirk worsted in Bramble. Here we go. And bramble again some hand spun yarn it, can you yeah. tell that i like bramble yes <laughs> and it actually looks really good with that yeah, sweater even though I, I don't think you would wear what basically is an aran weight and a worsted weight cowl with a t-shirt cotton t-shirt but you could yeah yeah and you could always put a cardigan on over yeah it's just where right. all the knits right yeah so that's yeah. it so and last time we talked about the fact that these two yarns in this cowl are completely different weights, mm -hmm. but it works, but it gives yeah. kind of like this corduroy effect yes. to, to it. It's yeah. really squishy and um, I, I gave it a good wash and a block and it, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited Great. about it. And even though we are heading into nicer weather, I still get cold in the morning. Yeah. So Simone's up yeah. at 430 running in the dark. <laughs> I will be wearing this in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and um, I'm a big fan of mattress stitch. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that they use mattress stitch on this one as a feature. Yes. So, so I'll to take it off. Now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, not going to be able to stop laughing about this. It <laughs> looks like I've got like a bird on my shoulder. <laughs> I'm not laughing. <laughs> okay. So this is where the cowl is joined at the back and she has you turn it inside out mm -hmm. and it's mattress stitched so that you get this beautiful little ridge yes. on the back. And as you can see, the lines oh, perfectly. Mm -hmm. travel along. Yeah. So it's just, even though you can't really see it in the back of your neck, yeah. it's one of those fun little features yeah, of cool. the project. Yeah. Cool. And it, I find that it goes really well with the um, I-cord edging on the top. Yes. The so this, uh, yeah. So was it a, an I-cord applied after or did, was it cast on? Knit right on. Knit right on. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, it was a really fun project, really fast. Yeah. And it took two balls of yarn. Yeah. Great. So Another stash nice. buster then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. You're really good for stash busting. That's really good. <laughs> okay. So that's, we're still laughing because we, <laughs> Ken just went from behind the camera to go check on his charging. How is his charging? We're letting the cat out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. I don't, I mean, <laughs> I could have taken responsibility and made sure that they were charging, but I, I remembered to charge the iPad, but I never even thought about the microphone. Technology's great when it works. And yeah, is my light still green? 
Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so now we good. can go to the next section. Right. So, <laughs> what's the next project? Um, Are you gonna, do you want to do um, Domino first? Because sure. that's almost done. It is. So we, you see what we did there? Finished objects, the designs, finished, just a finished object, somebody else's design, <laughs> almost finished object. <laughs> Domino. So I made good progress. Oh on yes, this. you did. Um, I've got both sleeves finished, and now I just need to work on the um, the neck ribbing, and then the ribbing at the bottom. Okay. And I will have a completed sweater. So normally, because you're a super fast knitter, this would have been done, I would think. But you're you're spreading yourself out for things that are fun and. Yep. things that you'd like to do right so exactly. do you usually have this many projects on the go usually i max out at three at three yeah. okay yeah okay so um i'm just kind of playing a little bit and then the yeah. hats were i didn't want to think about anything right so that's so i talked about that in my last newsletter is that sometimes you just want to have fun mm -hmm. and exactly. relax and not yeah. do so that's great you're allowed to do that yes yeah <laughs> we give you permission yeah <laughs> Okay, so I am just going to be play devil's advocate here mm -hmm. because this looks to me, I know that you're not really a big fan of cropped, mm -hmm. but this looks to me short. So is the is the the rib must be fairly wide, is it? It is. It's a fair bit and it's surprising actually. Um this this comes down to a pretty good length. Oh, okay. Me. Okay. Yeah. So it it does look a little bit cropped, but that's because it's wider. It's more yes. of a um sweatshirt fit okay kind of. so it's sort of like a little bit of an optical illusion yeah okay and this color combination i've talked about this three episodes in a row now because i find it very intriguing so because i wouldn't do it but simone does it and turns out beautifully so you have the red gradient in mm -hmm. selkirk worsted and you have pine cone which is this brown right. which now that i see it next to the red it actually has a red tone to it, it so it's uh yeah. it's works that works yeah. okay great so by the next podcast this will be done It'll for be sure finished. you don't have to finish it if you don't want to <laughs> for the next one you know if anything the the year is this uh statue of limitations for me if it's more than a year then i start to feel bad but anything <laughs> under a year I, I don't feel guilty <laughs> as regular viewers know so yeah i'll have it done just in time for really warm weather yeah perfect yeah. yeah it's yeah. very squishy and warm <laughs> and, and now last but not least yes is the ryu i don't know if it's ru, ru or ryu or we're not sure it's a place in newfoundland because all jennifer beale patterns mm -hmm. are named for a place in newfoundland so feel free any newfoundlanders that are watching to um correct our our pronunciation because i really don't like it when i get things wrong with i find it kind of disrespectful actually mm -hmm. so so i don't mind being corrected in the we, same way i would rather know how to say it properly yes yeah. exactly so so okay. this is uh i've showed a picture of it probably by now so now we put these uh we put this out on the tkb cord so we can mm -hmm. we can really take a look at it so where are you? This is still the first chart. It is. I'm almost finished with the first chart. I think I have maybe four rows right. to complete for the chart. And then it will be on to color work. Next. Okay, fun. Yeah. And I'm just going to show the kit. It's not in a beautiful presentation, but in case um, you haven't heard us talk about this, we have done a sock yarn kit to make this shawl. There's 14 colors. And um, the original colors, I will put the maker down below because I can't remember who the, the um, yarn designer was, were part of an advent calendar. So we wanted to um, have it knit with our, our, our mm -hmm. yarn. So we um, picked colors that were close to the original ones that were, that were dyed and we made this kit. So you can purchase it as a kit and you have all of the yarns. This actually is uh, is a kit packed up, ready to go to England. So, <laughs> so just show you what it looks like in the the. There's a lot of yarn in there. There is. Yeah, but you have everything you need, and you have the right quantity to to do it, so that you don't have to buy full skeins of mm -hmm. everything. So it's just gorgeous. Yeah. So these are the obviously this is the color that Simone is knitting with now, the seagull. Mm -hmm. and um these are all the colors that go into the into the color work yeah. so it's going to be excellent okay 
All right. I'm going to put that here. So next, um, it's color work and lace, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the next part from what I've read in the pattern, mm -hmm. um, I'll be preparing for the color work bands. Right. And she says that there are no steeps right. in this project and also no purling R in color work. I oh, believe. okay. So mm. there's a little plot twist. Here yes. <laughs> never happens with a Jennifer Beale pattern that you don't know where you're going, but you just have to trust the process. Yeah, but okay. so far it has been, um, it's been a really straightforward knit. Okay. And if you can follow written instructions or a chart mm -hmm. um, and you have a little bit of patience, uh, I think that it would be perfect for an adventurous beginner. Still, so far. you're sticking to that. Sticking to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. And any hints that you would give? Or just straightforward at this point? Just straightforward. Um, something that I like to do is I like to print out my pattern. I like right. an actual paper copy. Right. And whenever I'm working with a chart that's getting larger, especially with lace, yeah. because I find um, I'm not as practiced with lace as I am with color work, okay. and I can get a little lost, um, I just cross out the rows right. as I go. Right. And that way I know it's completed. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have, have to wonder, try to look and see. Okay. Yeah. And it's better than trying to like figure out where you are just by looking at your knitting. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Looks really nice. It feels really nice it does too. Feel silky. Really nice. So, and I've mentioned the blocking, so I can just imagine what this is going to look like when it's blocked too. Yes. It's going to be. Yeah. So right now it, it looks a little lumpy and bumpy, but yeah. that's because I'm just knitting it. Yeah. So if it's uh if it's not too much trouble, can you just do like a light steam block on it for the next podcast if it's if it's not too disruptive to your process. Yeah. Because I think it would be nice to be able to see how it uh, yeah. looks. Because I know how it looks when it's done. Like mm -hmm. I, our, our yarn when you have it blocked out. So yeah. um, if you did that, that would be great because you'd really be able to see the exactly. design. And we did put it on the TKB cords because it looked like a hat. It, it, <laughs> it still looked like a hat. Yeah. <laughs> but it just, it comes alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right. Perfect. Okay. And I think, uh, is that where we were we going to talk about something else? We had a big discussion about mm -hmm. um, knitting sizes, which we're, I'm going to have with Betsy because Betsy mm -hmm. and I both have projects where we ran into a little bit of a challenge with the knitting sizes. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. But I will um, say that uh, you do what I do, which is uh, and I think the way that the podcast is going to be put together, we've already had our discussion, right. but you are also a knitter that does what I do, mm -hmm. figure out your actual stitches per inch and yeah. then calculate the calculate what size you need to make that way. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I prefer to do that just because, uh, especially with a lot of the oversized garments that are really right. popular nowadays, I'm not one for a lot of ease with, right. with my, my sweaters. Um, I just it's a personal choice right so this way i get an idea of how big the finished project will be right before i embark on right. the knitting and then be disappointed exactly yes yeah okay yeah all right so i think that's it yep thanks simone okay and thank you to the customer that came yes 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 yeah, yeah, she picked out yarn for a sweater so yes. i actually hope she comes back with it because it's going really to be beautiful yeah, yeah she's gorgeous. knitting the lento from uh line of magazine number 11 mm -hmm. and uh it's kids still case held together with she's using our point prim sock yarn so yeah. it's and it's it looks it's like it's going to be really nice beautiful <laughs> yeah <laughs> and she's watching yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you well later this week. Yes. That's okay. Right. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. So you can see everybody's been busy in the shop. Lots of knitting being done. Lots of projects. And we'll look forward to the B pattern from Simone because I thought that was just gorgeous. I hadn't seen that myself until we, she just showed it uh, in that segment. So um, I think we'll all look forward to that pattern when it comes out. So I have a list of five and it's summer tops. And for the most part, I tried to pick patterns that were sleeveless. So more like um, sometimes they're called vests or camisoles. 
Um, there are a few different things that I've slipped in there because while I was looking, I just liked the, the uh, designs that I could find. So the very first one that we're, I'm going to talk about is one that I alluded to. It's called Amelia and it's a crochet pattern and it's in um, the Rowan Summertime Crochet book. But you can buy it separately on uh, Ravelry as well. I think it's uh, $7 US on Ravelry. If you, um, but if you're an avid crocheter and you want a nice selection of other summertime books, uh, you can, you can, or summertime patterns, you can find this book. I did do a slideshow on this in episode, um, I'm not sure, I'll put a title below and uh, I'll put a card uh, up here, up here, I think it goes on this side and you can uh, skip to that uh, slideshow if you want to see all of the patterns in uh, in the summertime crochet book so amelia and that is done with the cotton glacé so that was the yarn that i was talking about that has is the mercerized cotton so that's rowan cotton glacé for the amelia um, top the next one in the list of five is remy and this is by Kadri. Uh, sorry, it's the um, Remy Camisole by Kadri. Uh, we've talked about this designer before because she just makes beautiful, simple, elegant designs. And this camisole is just uh, beautiful. She knits it in a cashmere yarn, um, but I think you could, you could substitute a fingering weight cotton as well for this one. Um, it's sleeveless, so I think uh, cashmere is would be lovely, but uh, I think that it would make a great just casual uh, sleeveless top. And um, all if you if you uh, look on Kadri on Ravelry, you'll see that she just makes well everything she makes is just beautifully beautifully designed simple and elegant and the Remy is no uh, no exception to this so uh, that's my number two pick the third pick was something kind of unexpected it's called the forest keys vest and it's uh, I hope I'm going to pronounce her name right it's designed by Titi Teti Luxac <laughs> Teti looks Litsack and uh, it's made from a fingering weight yarn and I just love the little motif on it so it's cropped personally I don't wear a lot of crop things but I just loved the look of this design so it has a boxy look so it's pretty casual but with that motif on the front I just find that it's uh, really beautiful I think the price of this one is in euros and I think it was six 50 euros if I'm not mistaken but uh, you can just look it up in on Ravelry and, and find out all the information so that's the forest keys vest and uh, I actually even really like it in that brown color it's really really beautiful the fourth one on the list of five is uh, Laia by Isabel Kramer and um, it comes it's tech it's not sleeveless it, although it came up when i searched for sleeveless tops but you have that just that little cap sleeve and you can make a longer sleeve if you want so you have options with this this pattern and um it is knit it's shown in a wool yarn a fingering wool yarn but there's lots of um, people that have knit it with cotton yarns as well so it's pretty not all designs necessarily translate well between wool and cotton but this is a really cute uh um i'll call it sleeveless because it's really just a cap sleeve that that uh, i was looking at on the version that i was looking at but you can definitely knit it with a cotton yarn and um, you could use one of the summer light uh, yarns with this one, I think, and have a really good success. And number five on the list of five is the Golden Oak Tank. And this one is um, like tiny skinny straps, as you can see. So it's not even, it's more like a camisole as well but it has a beautiful little motif along the bottom that looks like, uh, well, kind of looks like oak leaves. So I guess that's where the name comes from. And this is designed by Agata Makiewicz. And I'm 
pretty sure that I pronounced that right. But <laughs> and this is just a darling little tank top. And uh, I think it would be pretty easy to adapt if you wanted to have thicker straps rather than those kind of spaghetti straps that it has. I think that that would be a pretty easy conversion because it does um, decrease down from quite a wide base at the at where it joins onto the top itself. So I think that would be a pretty easy adaptation to do. But I just love the way that the motif sits in on the waist and hips like the just it gives it has a very elegant look so those are my list of five for the top the the top summer tops that uh, i was looking for as we turn to um, knitting that's uh, not from wool but from other yarns like cotton or cotton blends so i hope you enjoyed enjoyed that for the PEI Fiber Festival update, I would like to give a, a quick status of where we are with the organization. So the list of all of the workshops has been released and we, um, by the time you're watching this, the tickets should be uh, just about ready to go in, on to uh, general sales. So we just started, when I'm recording, which is uh, Tuesday, the 25th of April, We've just started the sales for the people that have purchased tickets from 2022. They have first crack. Um, then for a couple days, the newsletter subscribers are getting uh, their chance to buy tickets before they're open to the general public. And by the time you're seeing this, we'll, um, we'll, I think it's actually May 1st that the tickets start opening for the general public. So I, if that's not right, I will make a correction in the titles below. But uh, things are really ramping, ramping up. Uh, the hotels have given us a report and the, the volunteer committee for the Fiber Festival and some of the rooms are booking up fairly quickly. If you go on the Fiber Festival website, you will see uh, all of the hotels that are offering special rates uh, listed at the bottom of the homepage and they're clickable links so you can make reservations if you need a hotel uh, room and you wanna stay. Um, in the downtown core, there's, there's, uh, they're all listed there. And all of those hotels have special rates for Fiber Festival goers. I also want to mention again, I mentioned this a couple podcasts ago. So the Fiber Festival takes place October 5th to the 7th, 2023. It's in Charlottetown. The main venue is the Delta on the waterfront in Charlottetown. Um, that weekend on the 6th of October, also another big festival in the maritimes is starting and it's celtic colors that are in cape breton so if you're planning on traveling to the maritimes for one of those events it's really easy to um, go between the events so what i would suggest is that you come to visit our fiber festival and it ends on the 7th celtic color starts on the 6th but goes for a week and there's all kinds of beautiful things to see in uh, cape breton it's held in cape breton in nova scotia and it's just a really really lovely event with lots of music and culture and um, we're really happy to have the events happening at about the same time because it really gives people if you're traveling here to the maritimes for one of the festivals one or the other then it's really easy to go to uh, to do the other one and you have a really really beautiful vacation with two premier events happening that weekend so I hope uh, you'll think about um, coming and visiting us at the Fiber Festival. And if you're staying in the Maritimes for a little bit longer, then you can go visit Celtic Colors over in Cape Breton and Nova Scotia as well. The ferries are still running at that time. So uh, when you get off the ferry, where the ferry docks on the Nova Scotia side, it's really a short trip to Cape Breton from there. And a lot of people do that, that kind of loop um, when they come to visit. So I think that's about it. And we're off to the harmony part. And as always, the harmony part is just uh, some beautiful scenery and a little bit of relaxing music to wind down and relax. And uh, it's where I tell you before we get there is to have a great two weeks until we see each other the next time. And may you find joy in all the crafting that you do and have a wonderful two weeks. Enjoy the harmony part and we'll see you next time.
Bye.